The novelist P.J. O'Rourke once wrote, There are a number of mechanical devices which increase sexual arousal, particularly among women. Chief of these is the Mercedes-Benz SL Convertible. The SL began life as the car of mistresses and trophy wives. But you'd think that after 40 years, that soft feminine image would have faded away like all beauty queens. But it hasn't. SLs still radiate a coiffured, perfumed elegance, and real men don't eat quiche or drive Mercedes SLs. Or do they? But Mercedes designed the R107 SL as a tough, fast autobahn blaster with strong V8 and straight six engines. Power outputs got bigger and bigger, culminating in the 560 SL that could crack a very masculine 145. The SL was also Mercedes' longest running car, sold for 18 years to 240,000 grateful buyers. That's an awful lot of mistresses. What all those macho blokes don't realise is that the SL has always been better than money in the bank. They've always depreciated at the speed of a rampaging glacier. This is a 1986 420 SL, and back in 1986, it cost £29,000. It has just been sold for 28 large. This is the car that just refuses to depreciate. And that's partly because in the 70s and 80s flashbulbs of fame, there was always an SL. JR and Bobby Ewing drove them in Dallas. They were in the opening sequence of Heart to Heart, plus a zillion other US TV shows and Hollywood movies. For me, the most astonishing thing about this car is that it never did that thing that second-hand cars do, which is a sad swallow dive into rusty worthlessness. It began production in the flower power era, finished it in acid house, and in those two decades and the two decades that follow it, it's always been on people's wanted lists. It's always made its money. Could this then be that rich and strange thing? The perfect car. And as well as being timeless, the SL was tough. This was one of the first Mercs to have a crumple zone and a passenger safety cell. The front screen was so strong it doubled as a roll bar, and that neat hardtop was so heavy you needed two friendly weightlifters to heave it off. Even the interior was engineered like no other car. SL seats have this miracle material called MB Tex, which is a kind of imitation leather, and it's the upholsterer's equivalent of Kevlar. And the carpets, the weave is so tight and so dense that they literally wear away at the speed of paving stones. So this really is one of the best-built Mercedes of the post-war era. And they used to call it in the factory, one and a half tons worth of der Panzerwagen. And as we know, the Germans know a thing or two about building tanks. still think the SL is far too girly. I'm sorry, but the girls are right. This is that rare thing, a common sense classic car that you don't have to suffer to drive. It's snug, it's reliable, it's fast, and it will make you money. What is feminine, soft, blousy, or daft about that? Nothing. This car makes sense from every perspective. Now, 
here's the thing. You can still go out and buy a decent SL for 5,000 quid. This is a 1981 380 SL. It's done 115,000 miles, but I am enjoying that SL magic. It still feels good, it still feels tight, it still pulls nicely. Here we go, kick down. Whoa! But here's the question. At 5,000 quid, why wouldn't you? In fact, I've just convinced myself I've got to go out and buy one of these cars now. It just feels so good. I've just got one thing to do here. There. That feels better. But to really test the SL's timeless class, we have to do what's known as the valet parking test. If you've got a cool car, a hotel car jockey will always park it out the front, but if it's rubbish, you get relegated to the multi-story round the back. So here we are, posh hotel, gravel drive. What's he gonna do? Is he gonna bury it, or is he going to display it proudly out front? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, our SL has passed the ultimate test, and he's parked it there because it looks so totally on the money. The SL from the 1980s would either be a classic red Chanel handbag um, or a really sexy pair of red Manolo Blahnik pointy shoes that make your legs look brilliant, just like the SL. It's not a woman's car at all. Um, there are many hairdressers' cars around at the moment that um, are meant to be cars for men, and they're not. Um, and I've heard it said that it's a woman's car, but it's not at all. It's a guy's car, fantastic car. I feel like, you know, sometimes you hit the nail on the head with, with everything. You know, it could be a jeans brand like Levi's, or it could be, you know, a, a car, a classic car like the SL, where they just get, they capture a moment in time and it just sticks. Let's face it, when it comes to all things visual and matters of style, women do these things so much better than we men. And all those trophy wives and mistresses back in the 70s, they made this car an instant classic because they knew. They knew it was a sexual message written on handmade paper. And women are also very, very good at spotting hard-wearing, timeless classics. The SL is the automotive equivalent of a pair of Louboutin stilettos or a Chanel handbag because it never, ever goes out of style. The world would be a much, much duller place without the Mercedes SL. And we blokes, well, we'd all be driving round in poo-brown Porsches.